Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. This is No Sound Bites Allowed, and I am your host, Michael Buffs, Dragon of the Southern Tier. I'm happy to be here with you today as I'm speaking with a very good guest. Uh, someone who is, well, he's a friend. He's someone I've spoken with a lot, and you've probably heard a lot about him recently. You may have heard about him on Razor Fist. You may have heard about him recently on the Archcast. It is Blaine Lee Pardo. And he's speaking with us today about, well, what's happening in the world right now. And Blaine, you're right here with us. Uh, before I do anything else, I know you're a renowned writer for 37 years. I don't want to take away any thunder from you. Introduce yourself. Um, I'm Blaine Pardo. I write, I've been on the New York Times bestseller list with my daughter uh, for one of our true crime books. I've uh, been on Amazon bestseller lists all over the place. Um, I'm a writer of science fiction. I write true crime. I write political thrillers. I write military history. I've been a guest speaker at the United States Naval Academy twice. Uh, I have spoken at the U.S. National Archives, the Smithsonian, the U.S. Navy Museum. Um, so, you know, writing is my passion, and I'm, I come at it from both a historian's perspective as well as a fiction writer's perspective. So, Now, I know one of the first things a lot of people who watch the show will say to me is, Mike, you never deal with entertainment. You, in fact, hate entertainment. Yes, but there's something much more important here. It, when we see that our the politics is interrupting our entertainment i've mentioned it many times that's a problem and when we see that the principles the cancel culture is destroying lives that's what we're talking about and that's what we're going to be talking about here today because that's why razor fist arch cast and many others are talking about it one of the things you left out besides behind you is your one of your more recent books blue dawn which I definitely want to hear a little bit about in a moment, but um, you've written for 37 years for, uh, it's a game system called Battletech. Now, giving away my age a little bit, I remember in my senior year of high school playing Battletech. This is about 1986. Uh, it's a game. It's basically big robots, lasers, and rockets. Yep. Okay. Um, some gamers out there like myself may be familiar with Mech Warrior 5. That's the battle, battle tech universe, kind of similar to like 40K. It's a big realm. It's a niche market, but a lot of people know it. Sci-fi people know it. Uh, I think that's a pretty fair way of saying that, right, Blaine? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's been around uh, since 1984, 1985. My first work on it was in 1985 on one of the very first books they put out as a supplement for it. So, yeah, I've been doing this for 37 years. I'm not going to be doing it anymore. Um, right. Catalyst uh, informed me that um, going forward, they do not want to publish any of my work. I had two or three novels in flight at the time and a number of short stories that were either completed and had already gone through edit or were done and awaiting edit. And uh, they simply paid me for those and said, we're no longer going to be uh, doing business with you going forward. See, now a lot of people hearing this will say, well, I don't understand why all these people are getting so excited about this. Why are they so interested in this? an author is not working with a company. That would be one thing. But the story and part of the story that's left out, and I know you've talked a bit about it, and I hope this will be somewhat cathartic as well, yeah. is why they, they, after 37 years, it's not that you aren't selling, that you don't have a fan base. It's not that you're still interested in it. It's because a convicted criminal had a bot account on Twitter and said, well, you're not woke enough. Is that a good way of summing that up? Well, this, this person stalked me for a while online. Uh, I'd written an editorial. I've been writing editorials, by the way, since the 1990s. Um, 
I wrote an editorial saying I was against Confederate statues being turned down. I, you know, as a historian, I just felt that that was wrong. I also felt that they were individual pieces of art and that, that this wouldn't stop with the Confederate statues. And this was, by the way, way before 2020 when I wrote this editorial. And this person started labeling me a neo-Confederate. And uh, I, I cut the person off. The person pretended online to be a female lesbian nurse who was in the middle of adopting two children, uh, listed her where she went to college, et cetera. It was a very robust resume that, you know, was there. And, I, and my whole thing was, well, I, you know, I don't, I'm not going to give you my social media platform to call me names and things along those lines. So I, I blocked the person. Um, this person got upset over a tweet that I put out and her and another uh, person contacted my publisher to have my books pulled because they claimed I had inserted hidden Confederate messages in my novels. Um, the publisher was Catalyst Game Lab. So you understand the background of all this. Catalyst is the licensee of Battletech. It is owned by Topps, and Topps has recently been purchased by Fanatics. Topps is the baseball card company, which I think most people know. Yeah. And, um, you know, they complained. Uh, Catalyst did a top to bottom review of a year's worth of my social media as well as looked into the books to make sure I hadn't snuck in some hidden Beatles play the album backward kind of message about Confederacy, uh, which obviously wasn't there. Um, and I thought this was over. Now, when I wrote Blue Dawn, which is, I, I will grant you, it is a conservative political thriller. It was designed as such as an alternate history book. Its target audience is conservatives. Um, when I wrote that book, just the announcement of that book coming out triggered this person to threaten my life. And they did so on multiple occasions, uh, reaching out to fellow authors, spreading those things and sending some pretty nasty hashtags and some other stuff, threatening videos, uh, showing Trump supporters being beaten and stuff. Um, law enforcement got involved. I got a protective order in place against this person. Um, and, you know, honestly, we found out it wasn't a, a, you know, 30 or 29 year old lesbian who's adopting children. It was a 39 year old guy living, you know, with his father, uh, his, his internet bills were being, you know, sent to his grandfather or, or has grandfather's name on them. He had been fired from his job at a big box store for issuing terroristic threats. He pled guilty to that. He's banned at that store and any function that they have. They've opened what's called a black file on him, um, which is real interesting. Um, yes, you know, so this was a repeat offender. It was a criminal that was doing right. this. My publisher was aware of it. And I told them, I said, you know, when Blue Dawn does come out, I intend to reference this, you know, in some of the articles that I will be writing about this as an example of woke culture. And the president of Catalyst said, hey, I'd do the exact same thing if I were. So, you know, they, it was amicable and I thought, well, they understood. Well, this person continued to rally people against me and the left works really weird this way, but uh, they then when my last Battletech book came out in February, started complaining not to Catalyst alone, but reaching out to Tops and to Fanatics. Mm -hmm. And so when I got the call, it was... Fanatics has told me, this is what the president of Tops told, or President Callis told me. I've gotten a call and it's from Fanatics, and they told me to make this go away. So we're no longer going to publish any of your stuff going forward. And I said, Well, wait a minute. You know, where did this come from? And he said, Well, it's because of this ongoing feud you have with this person. And I said, uh, I'm not feuding. This person threatened my life and I'm merely telling people about it. That's all. And that became, well, you know, it, it stirs up trouble every time you do anything, anytime you post anything, there's negative feedback. There's, and this person's gotten a number of followers and they're complaining and I'm just making this go away. Um, he referenced some of my social media posts. He said, some of those are, he said the quote that he used is 
you're alienating half of my client base. I know the sales numbers on the book that just went up. Sales are exactly what every standalone novel that I had done were selling at. And I said, so, and the ratings for the book were exactly the same as the other books I'd written. So I said, you know, 4.8 out of five on Amazon is not bad. And so I said, what, you know, when you say I'm alienating your client base, tell me what you mean. You know, the sales don't show that. And he said, well, sales don't matter. So when I heard that, I realized, okay, this is more about my political leanings. Um, I, I pointed out to him, I said, you've got a number of liberal authors who write for, or that write for you who post things online that are incredibly vile and, and insensitive. You know, so I assume they're being let go as well. You know, if you're doing this with me, you're doing it with them. And he's like, nope, you're the only person we're doing this with. Um, okay. So <laughs> let me step in because sure, there's so many things about this that just don't make any sense. You know, I also want to make sure people understand. I've been talking with you at least once a week since I, I believe it was March, maybe February. So about five, right. six months now, I have had conversations with you on every topic that has been out in the media, hot button issues. People can see I've put out videos about some of them. Um, and I can say that in six months, now when you get to speak to someone every week for hours at a time on every hot button issue, you find out pretty quick where that person is. You can't hide that. It's not like one conversation. Uh, maybe I heard this or I didn't. It comes out pretty clear. Blaine, I've heard you talk about everything. You are average American and you're rather nice about everything. I'm Thank a you. hothead. I, I mean, <laughs> people look at me and they go, oh my God, Mike's going off right now. And we've talked about some, we have some of the same ideas. We have some of different ideas, but you've always been respectful. You've always been well thought out. You've always been someone who has a considered position and you stand by your point of view. I respect all of those things. I don't think anyone wouldn't respect those things. Thank you. And yet they're coming to you and trying to create this literally a, a mythical persona of some kind of, I don't know, right-wing monster that they want you to be. And your publisher who knows you for 37 years goes, oh, uh, well, that's scary. That doesn't make any sense. It, it didn't make sense to me either. And, and one of the things I told him was, you know, I, you need to inform the fan base. I told him, I said, I don't want you to throw me under the bus, but you need to explain to the fans what you're doing. You know, and, and I left that to him uh, and he assured me that would happen. It never did. Uh, it took two months for us to get payment straightened out. Um, so I kept quiet during this whole period. Um, when my next book uh, came out in the Blue Dawn series, The Most on Civil War, back in June, um, you know, when the Amazon always sends out those announcements, if you've purchased a book by this person before, you know, here's the new book. Yeah, the new book. My, my former editor got that, and, and uh, he sent an email to me and the president of Catalyst saying, I don't want, uh, I don't want this drivel associated with battle tech. Now, bear in mind, the book wasn't even out. He hadn't read it. And, and you know, this is a guy who's, but I have bailed out on so many occasions, um, you know, with yeah, shows. He's, he's, you've made many books with him. How can yes. you say that? Many successful books with him. <laughs> uh, and, you know, it, it kind of blew my mind because what I was really being told was, we're not going to take the same action with our liberal writers who are writing things that are very offensive to conservatives. But you got to bear in mind, conservatives tend not to pick up the phone and call the corporate headquarters to complain. We just kind of roll our eyes and go forward. The left loved this. Um, so, I, you know, I gave it very serious thought and consideration. And, and I was like, you know, 
this isn't fair to the fans. I've been writing this stuff for 37 years. I've done 20 plus novels and novellas. I've done 25 source books for Battletech. I've actually been a very big advocate for Battletech. And I still am, by the way. I, I will not say anything bad about Battletech. No, and no one's uh, asking me to. No and, and I won't. And I don't, you know, people have been screaming, oh, should we be boycotting this? And I'm like, I, you know, you got to do what you want to do with your money. I'm not encouraging that either. It, it's not where, that, you know, if I want to inflict harm, I'd be the first person going, yeah, boycott them. I'm all for it. But I don't think boycotts really work. Um, you know, it, people say they're going to do it and then they don't. And, you know, I don't want I don't want to be that guy. I'm not an activist at all. I'm just a guy that got targeted. And uh, so I announced this last week uh, in American Greatness, I, I had an article posted on it. Um, and we were in talks with a number of different media channels about where to go with it. Uh, and I've also had a piece come out in a different magazine as well on this um, recently. And, you know, these are mainstream conservative sites. They're not crazy, but what the woke will do with this. And I think this is what your, your listeners need to know. These guys have gone out and data mined everything I've ever written. Mm -hmm. So they went through my Twitter account and, and I wrote two pieces about how I thought diversity and inclusiveness programs in corporate America were pure BS. I agree. They don't have a definable target. They don't have any tangible proof that what does a diversity program that they actually increase quality or reduce cost. Right. And they're a problem. They are literally in a corporation looking for someone to be offended so that they can move on and tackle that. And they're not effective because they use training as the primary change mechanism to drive their change. That's all the articles say. Right. It doesn't say anything about gays, transvestites, or anything else. They've used things like that and said, see, he's homophobic. He's a trans hater. He's, so they, they take stuff like that and they, they label it and, and go that way. So on January 6th, I've written a column uh, for American Thinker where I said, this isn't an insurrection. There's no scenario no. here. Nobody's been charged with insurrection. And there's no scenario where Donald Trump was going to walk out at the end of the week as president, you know? No. And so the, the argument it's an insurrection is, is stupid. It, was it a mass trespassing event? Absolutely. Uh, we could argue all that all day. They turned that around and said, see, he's a seditionist. He's an insurrectionist. Uh, I questioned the, uh, whether the last election whether there were shenanigans. That's a word I used, by the way, shenanigans. You know, yeah, it, yeah. was the last election really valid? I don't know. And I put it that way. That was labeled as, see, he's a Trump supporter. He supports the big lie. He's an alt-right Nazi. So they, they take your little innocent comments completely out of context, I might add. You know, I don't get this, Blaine. Why is it that whenever... We ever, you, me, there's many of us out there, when we ever say, I have a question about whatever they're feeling at that given moment, I have a question. The next thing I hear back is, you're a racist, you're a sexist, you're an ist, you're a phobe, you're a demon, and you are the problem. Wait a minute, I asked a question. If you're so bloody confident that you've got the right answer, why can't you answer my question? I mean, that should be simple, right? Because when should. they come to me and they go, Mike, you've got to answer this. Well, I have an answer. I don't like that answer. I didn't tell you you would. No, well, well, that's not good enough. Well, it is good enough. That's my answer. No, that that, that means you must be an ist and a phobe. Prove it. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, the, the, the part that was hateful, and, and I probably shouldn't share it, but I, I, I do want to say it. My son's gay. And I completely yeah. support him and have his entire life. And I, you know, so for them to come out and say I'm, I'm anti-gay or anti-trans, you know, I, I have actual experience in that community be, through my son. I don't have any issues there, but they don't really care. And, and what's been really interesting is since I made this announcement, obviously the fan community got upset. Mm -hmm. 
And that wasn't really my intent. My intent was, look, you guys keep asking me when books are coming out. I don't know because they've been they've been canceled, so they're not right. coming. Um, the fans got upset, and it, it's interesting. They put up one of the fans put up a poll on Twitter, going, "Do you support the Catalyst's decision?" Well, somebody. And I'm not going to say who, because I don't know for sure. We're out buying bot votes. So at one point, I'm up by 56% to 10% or something. And then in 30 seconds, 3,000 votes dumped in. Out of nowhere. And, and they were all one way. And you know, I'm like, you guys are literally making the case for me. Wait a minute. My it, points are right. You got to add in. This is on a Twitter feed that's got a couple of hundred uh, followers. Right. And suddenly 3,000 brand new people who never been involved suddenly decided to vote on this. Right. And so they took it down, they ran it again, and somebody went out and bought more. So the guys put it up on YouTube now. And I, I haven't looked at it today, but I was at, you know, it was like 80% or 85% of the fans were against what had been done with me. I, you know, I, it's amazing. And what's funny about this, not funny, pathetic and sick is what I'm going to say. Yeah. They've won because I'm not writing ballot. So the left has won. Yeah. From they have their not star, stopped their attacks. As a matter of fact, they've now escalated them and they're going after other fans who think it's a bad call. And so they always have to have a target. And, and it's a lot like I was telling my wife, I feel a little bit like Trump must. Okay, I'm not in office. You're still going after me. It's like they, they, have, they have to validate what they've done. They have to go. Everybody needs to be on my side on this issue. And if you're not, you're part of the blame problem. And it's really, I think it's detrimental to the hobby as a whole. And I don't think it's helping creativity because to me this is censorship at the source it is i get it it is absolutely censorship and it's it's bad for everyone because it means one of the big things i hate is not allowing people to think it's like grammarly i hate grammarly why because it's a program thinking for you you're not thinking it's giving you words uh, i don't like anything that I don't like restrictions on speech. C-16 in Canada, Jordan Peterson's spoken a lot about that. Um, you have the words you can't say because of whatever reason. I, I don't agree with that. That limits thought. That limits the ability of someone to make a choice. And in every medium that we see that, it is always for the, for the negative. It never helps anyone. It only... It always grows because you can never satisfy these people. They'll just pick another person. They'll just continue to attack. It never ends. I, I told that to the person who came. So we were talking, I said, you are literally putting them in charge of your publishing department. Because once you, they know they've won, they will do this now on any subject. If you put out a book that they feel doesn't have enough transgenders in it or gays or other woke themes baked into the novel, you know, that author is going to be the target of their next wrath because they got away with it. And I said, you're literally turning this over to them. And there was... They're going to turn everything into Mary Sue Ray out of Star Wars and all of their books because it's that's what they want. It's like, you've got to do that. And, you know, and probably the next time, instead of... Uh, Finn being just black and comedic, he's going to be black, comedic, and gay, most likely. I mean, that's well, what they're going to turn their characters into. Well, the, you know, and I, I'm all in favor of having trans characters or gay characters, as long as it makes sense for the character. As long as yeah. it's, as a writer, I go, how is this fundamental to the actual character, or, you know, and what does this do for their arc? When you just do it for the sake of doing it, um, I don't think it adds anything to the creative process at all. It just looks like what you're doing is virtue signaling. Well, yeah, you know, but I've got three trans characters in this book, and and I don't play that game. I'm not I'm not that guy. I'm not going to sit around virtue signal this stuff. Um, you know, but it's been it's been amazing because here they've won the battle. You took me out. Congratulations. 
85% of the fans hate the fact that it was done. And now they're just waging war amongst themselves going, well, you guys need to understand how evil Blade really was. You know, the fact that you sort of data mining my stuff and trying to put a spin to it um, is amazing. It, it literally tells me that you are sitting in your parents' basement with your pants around your ankles <laughs> on the internet all day. And uh, you know, my, my applause to you for trying to take me out, but it's you're not you're only hurting the rest of the fan community, and you're you're making this a toxic event. Yeah, I had one person today go, you're just doing this to sell books. Well, if I was going to do that, I would have released the story on June 29th when my new book dropped, you know. The reality is I got six books or seven books that are going to be released this year. Having said that, at any point in time, I always have a book out. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That I, you know, and you're telling me if I'm writing conservative thrillers, I shouldn't at least mention them during all this well you're just a moron you know i'm going to do that because i've been told i'm no longer going to have a revenue stream from battle tech so i'm going to do whatever i have to do to to maintain my level of sanity and if i decide to promote well i'm going to promote but it isn't about that and that what this is about is censorship at the source we're not going to have conservatives doing writing now bear in mind my politics don't reflect in the book well that i want to mention something to people because i know personally by the way i i and people are wondering how important you are to battle tech by the way i love razor fist he mentioned a quote i think it may have come from some you did a live stream with him yesterday i do advise people to look at it uh he called you the george lucas of battle tech which i thought i think he was exaggerating a little bit (laughs) maybe but uh i personally know that literally as i said we have been on round tables we have spoken about many many subjects for five six months in a row and i cannot name one time where you ever mentioned battle tech literally until this weekend when I heard this news and I looked back, that was the first time I found out that someone I've been speaking with for months is, I knew you were a writer and I knew about Blue Dawn. I did not know about the battle tech and I just thought you're a political writer. So I didn't, I wasn't really even thinking about it. So for them to say that you're bringing politics, I'm like, when? It's never happened. No, it, it hasn't. And Yeah, it was interesting today. Uh, I did get a call from Catalyst yesterday. Uh, The president called me and I took the call, which there was a lot of debate about that while the phone was ringing. And he apologized for the editor saying my work was dribble, um, which was nice. I still haven't heard from the editor. I doubt I will. Uh, Today he put out a statement and something along the lines of blame wasn't canceled. We just released one of his old novels this weekend. It just dropped. Uh, They've reprinted one of my books. So they're like, see, he's not canceled. We're just not going to do anything with him going forward. So again, now back to the subject you and I talked about just yesterday, they're redefining what canceled is. Oh, yeah. Um, You know, so we're going to play with the definitions a little bit, but I'm not going to react to his statement other than to say, you know, I have a transcript of what was said because I transcribed my notes, typed them up because I knew there was going to be points of contention. I haven't made all of those public. If I have to, I will. Uh, To defend myself, I I don't want to have to do that. I'm hoping that they can find a reconciliation amongst themselves for this. I, you know, the well, fans keep asking, are you willing to go back? And I'm like, I've kind of been stabbed in the back. Uh, there's a real trust issue here. I don't personally see a scenario where I can go back into that culture because I don't know if I can work with these people and trust them. And I don't think they want me back either at this point. Well, uh, well um, we're going to take a quick break. Sure. We'll come right back. And then I'm going to ask a question about that subject, about what's the future and how that entertains. 
So Blaine, you just mentioned the future. People are saying, will you go back? Now, I find it interesting because we're seeing right now that they're redefining what cancel is. And they're doing the rounds, by the way, uh, for my audience that know. They're going out, they've gone to Happy Gamer, they've gone to PC Gamer to suddenly put out articles, brand new articles. You know, Battletech hasn't done anything since 2018, and it's still a great game in 2022. All the articles came out literally four days ago. They literally have, so they're trying to support their public image. Because I think someone, either at Fanatics Incorporated, or at Catalyst Lab Games has realized this may not have been the best idea we've ever had. And so I have to think that they're considering we may want to try and go back because if I remember correctly, when Razorfist was speaking to you, they came to you and said, hey, how about some pro bono work? Help us with Battletech. Am I right? Yeah. That was, it surprised me. And it came from Randall Bill. So I really have a ton of respect for uh, as a person, uh, and he works at Catalyst, and he reached out to me and said, we're doing a coffee table book about Baltech, and we're getting quotes from people who are major contributors for it, and we want a quote from you, and I said, you know, if it, Randall, if it was anybody else, I would have gone off the rails on this, but I said, you know, do you really want a quote from me? You just told me six weeks ago that I was banned from Battletech going forward. And now you're asking me to write you a piece that will help you sell product by talking about what a great universe it is. And it is a great universe. I, I have no problem with that, but I have a problem with you asking me to write something when you just told me we don't want you to write for me. And he sent me back a nice response, but, but the meat of it was, but we're not going to pay you for it. Um, so it's not a paid thing. And I'm like, so how is that making it better? And, and I was going to respond to it and I, I let it go because I, I knew he hadn't intended it to be mean. No, it just came out that way. And, you know, between that and the letter I got or the email I got from John Helfer's calling my work drivel, um, you know, somebody who I really, John has, has called me up a few times, you know, in the middle of the night going, can, can you help me with a project? I need something in two weeks. It, it's an emergency. You know, it, to me, it just was disingenuous. And um, it, it just was kind of cold hearted on their part. And, and I got the feeling that they were just very casual about what they had done. And uh, that, that bothered me. And, my, and I talked it over with my wife. No, and I, I wrote Blue Dawn. My wife came right out and she said, you know, this is probably going to cost you at some point, Battletech. And I said, no, no, no. The fans will be able to tell the difference between my political ideology and, and yeah. you know, fiction. Different fiction. genres. Completely different genres. Yeah. The fiction book. And, you know, the free market system, you know, I, I was like, the free market system will determine what's right, what's wrong. If they don't buy the book, they don't buy the book. I'm good at that. Um, but she was right. She was 100% right. She's a very smart uh, woman. And, uh, you know, it, it did cost me, but I have zero regrets about that. Um, you know, I, th this all comes down to your values, yes. your ideals. And, and, you know, I offered to write under a pseudonym when, when he told me this. I said, I will, you've got other authors who don't use, they use pen names. I'll just spin up a persona. Yeah. That has zero social media presence. You can publish my stories. No one will know who the author is. And at least my fans will get to read stuff. And at some point, maybe down the road, when this woke crap is gone, I can go, by the way, that was mine. Like and he said, nope, thing. that's not good. That's on women. It worked for Stephen King. Workable. Stephen King did that. I know. It, it works for a lot of writers. I, there's a number of, of military science fiction writers that write under three or four pseudonyms. And, and I know them personally. So I'm like, how is, it, it was weird. It was a strange situation. And, uh, you know, it, it was clear that there was no due process with this. It wasn't, let me present you what they've said online. Let's talk through it. It was, we've rendered judgment, or I've rendered judgment, and you're just not going to write for us anymore, and that's it. 
And, you know, that's part of this whole cancel culture thing is yeah. there's no court. There's no, well, wait a minute. Let, and some of the pieces that, by the way, they're saying I wrote that, you know, snippets online yeah. are not things I wrote. They're yeah. fake. They're completely made up. That's and not new for them. They do that a lot. They do it a lot, but it, it's like, I haven't experienced it personally up to this point. And, and it was like, I looked at one and I was like, I, I don't even use those acronyms. It was, it was something about AF, you know, and I was like, I don't use the as F, you know, that, yeah. that's not, that's not my nomenclature even that I wrote that. But it's being used as a piece of propaganda again about what a terrible person I am. See, they um, gotta create their own little narratives. They, I've had uh, to an extent, I've had this happen. Like when I've been out, uh, I've run for a couple of uh, elected offices, and I've done speeches at various uh, colleges, and I've had them come up to me afterwards and go, "Well, you said." I'm like, "Okay, I have over fourteen hundred videos. I've been doing it for fifteen years. I've written." 2000 over 2000 articles with 2 million words please show me the sentence where i've ever said anything like that i've never said that in my life and they go well no no but i'm sure it's you it's like it doesn't exist guys because they can't it, i think it's their world view that it when they're proven wrong and they know that they're wrong they have to find something they have to create something so that justifies why they're so vitriolic well you gotta bear in mind the total th this group that goes after you they're on the internet constantly so mm -hmm. this is the only place they have validation it's the only place they exist in the real world they probably don't contribute a heck of a lot to society they probably have a menial job if they're employed at all and they're they're literally people that don't you know, the only place that they have any presence is online. And this makes them feel powerful. It gives them some degree that I exist and, and I'm important because I can do things against other people. And, and it's really both sad and pathetic yeah. that, that this is what they're doing because it's like, gee, you know, most of these people have not had the the balls that god gave us hand flea to ever reach out to me personally <laughs> no. about any of this they they but they feel that they're fully empowered to say and and post nasty things about me online and it's you know i, I come from a generation where you know we didn't like things or dislike things uh, you know thumbs up thumbs down i we actually talked to people mm -hmm said i have a real problem with what you said or did you realize the context of what you said if i take it out of context and i even i even talked to the publisher about that at the time i he said well some of the things you you've i've seen that people are circulating you know there these quotes you know you take these out of context they're very offensive and i said but you just said it you, you just context. said yeah out yeah. of context and i said i could go through a whole bunch of your stuff pull it out of context label it any offensive thing i want and he goes well yeah but that's how the internet works <laughs> and i'm like okay simple like, point. You're, a, you're a publishing company context is everything yeah you know? isn't that the whole point we're using words they have meanings this is your yeah. job <laughs> like it's the core of the job i know it, it really blew my mind uh you know, I'm sure that they will paint me as the, the great Satan, and I really don't care at this point. Um, you know, I know what I've done. Uh, it would take a lot for me to go back to Baltech. I'm never going to say never. That's, I think that's wrong to kind of dig your heels in. But, you know, this is a question of trust, and my okay. trust has been my trust has been shattered. And, and I, you know, how could I trust somebody that did this to me once if they won't turn around and do it again? Well, I think it's also a matter of principles, and I, I have to applaud you. And as I said in my tweet to you when I found out about this, I'm looking forward to buying your next book. I'm also looking forward to being involved with the creative juggernaut if that's still moving forward. Yes, oh, yeah. I found out about it. I did some I did some research. I know one of your next projects, and then we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but I, I want to be there to support you because I think a lot of people 
no matter what you may think about cancel culture, if you think it's a big deal, a little deal, you have to remember people are standing up for their principles, for what they believe, for free speech. And we have to recognize that and at least pay attention to it when it's happening. And I don't think enough people do because the next time it's going to be me or it's going to be someone that we know or someone else down the line. It's happening and we're seeing it. And everyone said, well, it's only Steven Crowder. It's one show. He's maybe a little edgy. Oh, it's Tim Pool or it's... Uh, What's his name? Uh, Tim Allen, Gina Tim Carano. Allen. Yeah. I mean, there's a you know Roseanne Barr. There's, there's a, a whole, whole list. Of there's that whole list, and they're like, "Well, they're stars. They're bigger. They're they're bigger than life. It would never happen to average people or real people." It's like, uh, no. And then I'm seeing it's happening to. I've seen that happen to other individuals. I'm seeing it happen to you. I've been threatened with it. Just this Sunday, I was doing my live stream. I had a guy who i think is a bot come on he's like joe biden's the greatest thing in the world okay I, my answer was why tell me why well you just don't understand well that's why i'm asking you why well you're just hateful what you're racist how am i racist i haven't mentioned anything about race oh you know what you ain't black well that is racist he says well i'm going to report you for and this is the line that gets me after he says i'm a racist then tells me i'm not black and then his next line to me, and this is during a live stream, so people are watching this all being typed out as I'm talking. And his next thing is, I'm going to report you as hate speech. I'm like, the only one who said anything hateful is you. How are you putting that on me? And this is where cancel culture, it grows from. If it isn't for the fact that I'm standing up there going, and I'm, I have witnesses and it's live, I'm like, people, are you watching this? This guy's going to try and report me shut me down because he called me a race because he's using racial slurs against me and therefore i'm a hate speech that's why i think this is important to have this conversation with you blaine oh i i, I appreciate that because and i'm sorry that you had to go through that as well but I, I think any of us that speak out for any value that isn't left we're, we instantly get a target painted on us and yeah. we know it uh, it's yeah. part of what we do, but you know, I, it does it. I, I think one thing that was interesting when a fan reached out to me, they said, Well, if you just kept your big mouth shut, none of this would have happened. And I said, I'm not going to sacrifice my First Amendment rights or my angst about issues so that you can get a story about stompy robots. You know, this is you want me to be quiet. If I kept quiet, then you could have got more stories from me then you're telling me I have to be silenced. I have to smother what I feel. And the reality of the situation is that Catalyst is going to have to wrap its hands around and other companies as well as if I had been posting things that said I'm against Roe v. Wade mm -hmm. being overturned, if I had said we need to stack the Supreme Court, gosh darn it, we need the Green New Deal. This is crazy. If I had said all the Republicans in, in Congress were behind this seditious act of overthrow, trying to overthrow the government, if I had posted that stuff, I would actually still be employed. Which is scary. That's scary. Because these are some of the things, by the way, and I'm taking them very lightly compared to some of the things that these other authors and artists that they're retaining, that's what they're saying. And... So they're saying things like Republicans should all roast in hell. I know. I, I and, 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 I'm, and that's a quote run from one of them. And, and I'm like, but so if I posted that stuff, I would still be working here. And, but Catalyst is going, this isn't political at all. And I'm like, it is 100% political. How could it not be? How could but, it be? You know, you, you, you could say that, but it, you only said that I was the only person who had their relationship severed. That being the case, you clearly are picking a side in this fight, which is, as a publisher, a huge mistake, unless that's your overall strategy. It's, hey, we're only going to market to the left. If that's the new strategy, well, then they have hit a home run. Um, <laughs> you know, but I don't think it's going to be a home run with the fans. And no. That, that's going to be a challenge. So and we've seen that with Kenobi. We've seen that with Disney Star Wars. We're seeing with that the MCU. 
We've seen it with every every one of these products that are saying, oh, we're going to bend the knee. We're going to silence any voice of question or difference or opposition. And we're just going to do the woke thing. And they have all failed every single time. Fans just walk away and say, okay, well, like for myself, I saw um, it was episode eight, The Last Jedi. I stopped at five minutes into that movie. I have not touched anything Star Wars. I, I, we're about to, we're about to right. age. And I've been a fan for Star Wars since it came out in theaters when everyone was wrapping around the blocks to watch it. I've loved Star Wars. And now I don't care. It's like, oh, they got to, uh, I don't care. I'm not going to watch it. I, I, I gave up on them. They left me. Why am I going to give them my money? Same thing with the, the latest phase, phase four of Marvel. It was great up until Endgame. Well, a uh, minus uh, uh, Ms. Marvel. And now I'm like, there's nothing in there that makes me want to be there. When are these companies, and, you know, we've seen this with every industry this has happened in. I don't understand how they don't get that this is dividing America and making people less, you're having less fans, less loyalty to your brand, more division in the country. We're just dividing people on so many levels. And that's not good for anyone anywhere. It's not. And, and you know, it's not that as if I'm a liberal writer or a conservative writer, I'm inserting my ideals in books. You know, I'm not doing that. I'm just telling good stories about great characters. That's even that's my you, shtick. You know what? Even if you were and you're doing it well, because that's what a writer has that ability. You you're more fair and clear to put in anything you want in a book if it's a good book. I could yeah. get less. Yeah. And, and you know, when I'm found, it's been very interesting since this all started. I've had three different publishers reach out to me and say, "Let's have a talk." Go. And because we have conservative people that have, are writing for us and we really don't care about what your politics are or what your politics are. We just want the talent. Yeah. And and, come through. Yeah. And, and I'm like, you know, so these guys are actual publishers, you know, that are substantive. And I'm, I'm sitting here going, these guys seem to have their stuff together. It's amazing to me that these other places are, kowtowing or, or bending the knee to you know, a handful of people in many cases. You know, I, I even asked the president, I said, how do you know that these complaints? And, and at the time he showed me that there were five complaints. Oh boy. Wow. There were probably more, but his logic I'm sure was if I'm seeing five, that means there's a thousand. I don't know. But I, I said, how do you know this isn't like two people with a bunch of sock accounts? Right. You know, because their messages are all cut and paste. So it may just be one guy sitting in his basement firing off five accounts. We don't know. That and and he goes, well, it doesn't matter. You know, and, and I'm like, well, it kind of does. It, yeah. it, it actually kind of like if you're going to put me on trial and you're going to pass judgment, you know, this is kind of a kangaroo court situation. You've well, already nice. you've already determined I'm guilty. You've applied the sentence, and now you're asking me, how do I feel about it? And I was very professional, but then they decided to ask me for some pro bono work, and then they decided to call my work drivel. And, you know, it's like, you know, it wasn't enough for you to just let it go. You had to spike the ball in the end field and do a dance. You know, like... He, it what doesn't the hell think. were you thinking? Like, well, well, that's good. I, I think they're thinking that they're trying to cover their asses now because they're seeing the reaction and it's more than it's more negative than they thought. But you know what? Let's take a positive. Let's sure. take a positive here because yeah. it means that you're now able to write to maybe three additional publishers you weren't writing to before. Yeah. You have the creative juggernaut now. It's an entire system. Um, I, I like sci-fi. I like <sighs> Warhammer. Uh, I don't like the new changes to Warhammer because they're becoming more woke. But I love yeah. Warhammer, the original 40K. I remember Battletech. I really didn't get into it as much. I, I was 
maybe the early 90s before I went to Russia, I was into it, but I didn't pick it back up. I recently was playing ba- uh, Mech Warrior 5, so I was reminding myself that I like House Karita and House Lao. Um, not House Steiner, don't know why, just they didn't appeal to me. Probably because of the mechs they have. Uh, Steiner's real slow. <laughs> they got big, slow uh, mechs, as I recall. But, uh, you know, so you have an opportunity. Are these things going forward? Is Are we going to see Creative Juggernaut? I, I think you were mentioning that you have an entire game system coming out. Yeah, we're actually work. We've I did the initial design on the game system, and it's in development right now, uh, which takes a long time to get it right. Mm. I've written the first three novels; they're actually done and edited. We were going to do them as a Kickstarter. Uh, I got to talk to my business partners because some new opportunities are presenting themselves, so we may be able to get them out much quicker Good. Uh, to a broader audience, even than mm-hmm. that. Yeah, there's a whole a whole bucket of opportunity that has presented itself here. And I, you know, I I look forward to it. I I'm going to create games and I'm not going to pander to one political side or the other. We're just going to tell really cool stories that are set like 25 years in the future. It's military sci-fi there, you know, it's kind of got that feeling of the expanse and some of the new science fiction vibe to it. There's great characters and their ensemble casts, which I love writing about. I did that with Blue Dawn as well, where it's like, I love having an ensemble of characters where you tell everything from their different perspectives. And from a writer's creative perspective, I just find that fun. Uh, the, the books for Land and Sea are just incredible. Um, we're, we're really excited about them. Um, yeah, you should be. I, you know, I find it interesting because you're mentioning a lot of the stuff that I'm looking at now, like The Expanse, which is doing great. Eric July, The Ripoverse, doing fantastic. It's, it's amazing. It sounds like you're doing what a lot of people are doing now is, okay, mainstream won't let me appeal to the fans let me go directly to the fans and the fans are going, yes, please give me yeah. what I want. Give me. Yeah. I, I tend to agree. I, you know, and, and I think it's sad that we have to go create our own commerce uh, to do that, that we have to go find a place to, we have to go create places that are where free thought is, is accepted and open and, things along those lines, I can assure you that when we hire authors, we are not going to be doing checks of their politics, um, you know, and get and and game support people. We're not going to be, you know, trying to filter through what their political leanings are. I'm looking for talent. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I want, I want the best of the best. I don't want people that, you know, if they, if they happen to have a completely different political ideology than me, fine. As long as it doesn't show up in their work, or, or as long as it shows up appropriately, I, I really don't care. I think it'll be fine. Yeah, you can have whatever character you want as long as the character makes sense in that universe. Yeah, they can do whatever they want. It, it, that's the character. Does it make sense? You know? Yeah, it, it it's amazing though. But the, the wokeness has entered the whole dynamic, even of writing, um, even doing true crime. I was talking on a podcast. Oh, I do true crime. My daughter and I, I are know. The but but you know, I, but you're you're telling me they brought woke into how do you bring woke into true its crime? Uh, okay, I was literally on a, a podcast where I said, "Well, this woman was thought to be a prostitute," and they were like, "Stop, we have to edit that out. It's a sex worker." And right. I said, "The police report said prostitute." You know, and they're like, yeah, but we can't use that word. That word is inflammatory and derogatory to women. <laughs> and, and I said, and I'm not kidding you. And, and it's a very famous <laughs> podcaster, too. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to use your words, but I got to be honest with you. You know, I said, I, this is the first I ever heard of this in the true crime realm. And they're like, oh, yeah, you can't use the word prostitute anymore. That's bad. We can't use it anymore. It's like you can't call an illegal alien an illegal alien, which is a legal term. You have to use undocumented worker. The document they mean they're missing is un- any authorization to be there. You can't say man or woman because what's the op- what is a man? The opposite of a woman. What's a woman? 
opposite of a man. It's circular logic that makes no sense and it helps no one. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of woke stuff that has crept into even in the gaming stuff. Uh, when I was working on a book called Hour of the Wolf, the editor was asking me, you know, can you change you change the sex of one of these characters? And I said, why? And he said, well, the last two chapters, you've had just guys in scenes. And so it'd be good. It's a sausage fest. Change this so one of the people is, is a woman. And, and that was his word, not mine. Um, right. And I said, why? And he goes, well, because, you know, that, then there'll be a mix of men and women. I said, you do know in the real world, sometimes only men are in the room and sometimes only women are in the room. Sometimes there's more men, sometimes there's more women. No, I'm not changing this to check off a box because yeah. it doesn't do anything for the story. It doesn't do anything for the character. It, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, and, what? It, it, and I'm sitting here, why am I having this discussion? And now it all kind of fits together as to, uh, you know, this is what was going on behind the scenes. And, it, it, you know, now I, I look back at some of the notes that I've had on books and I'm like, now I see what was driving some of this. It was politics. And I wasn't, I honestly, I wasn't inserting politics. They're, they were trying to get me to insert politics to virtue signal. And that's all it was. And I, and I was like, I can't. I can't get into that. It's just, it's weird and it's not the right dynamic. No, it never is because it, it comes off artificial and people can, whether, no matter the medium, people will always react and realize this doesn't feel right. It's artificial. It doesn't fit because that's not the style of the medium that it has been. We're, we're doing something wrong. And I think that, you know, I, I have to tell you, Blaine, I think this is going to be one of the best things that has ever happened to you. Well, thank you. I, I don't know if that's the case, but no, I, look, look at that what wasn't I, the intent. I think a lot of people are going, oh, you did this to profit. And I'm like, yeah, if you saw the nasty stuff that people have been posting on me online, no per scene person would volunteer to do that to try to sell a book. No, um, that, that's silly because I, I, I've had a touch of that. I've had the people when I'm out at an event and I had a, literally a mob of 75, no one wants this 75. Imagine 75 people come up to you surrounding you, scaring off the news media and screaming in your face for an hour saying you're a racist. That, and they're not listening to anything. They're just keep screaming. You're a racist for an hour. Do you think anyone wants that? No, no, we don't do this because we want that. No. Yeah, you know, and it's amazing that you know, people come up with all their little agendas and stuff. And you know, sometimes a good cigar is just a good cigar. <laughs> you know, <laughs> life is simple sometimes. But I, yeah. think, but I've seen that, like for Gina Carano, like Eric July, we're seeing these creators who are coming out and they're having bigger success once they get through this hurdle. And it is a hurdle, and it is a pain in the ass, and no one should have to deal with it. But the success on the other side of that is even bigger because like all the weights are being lifted. It's like, okay, they're no longer on your back. And that's what I'm thinking is going to happen with you. I, I don't know what the future holds. I've always, I've been busy anyway. I'm working on book five of the Blue Dawn series right now. Book three will be out sometime, I think this winter. I don't know if it'll be this year or early next. Yeah, so I mean, book four is already done. I'm writing book five. I'm working on a true crime book with my my daughter. Uh, so we're having some fun doing that. Yeah, I have plenty to keep me busy. Um, this has been a huge distraction, but it, it's about my values and it's about who I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to apologize there was a few people have said well why don't you just apologize and make this go oh, hell no. like i didn't do anything wrong so i'm not going to apologize i would uh, blaine i would yell at you on any of the any of the various shows that we are on where we get to do round table and speak i'd, I'd be right there at you going why did you do that please yeah. don't do that uh, and i hope you never do and i hope you don't stop any of the round tables or any of the, uh, you know, I appreciate. No, no, no. I, I'm enjoying well. I'm sharing my view and I don't care if you don't agree with it. 
right. then don't watch it. I, I don't care. It's not a. I'm not forcing anyone into my opinion. Exactly. I am talking to an, a specific audience, and I'm telling them things that will resonate with them. And I'm trying to do it as a writer in a creative way in some cases, or in a very direct way if I'm writing an op-ed or something mm -hmm. along those lines. Yeah, I, I'm not this horrible, evil person that I keep being painted as. And it, it's amazing to me that, that people kind of go down that path. But, you know, these people, all they have is their hate at this point. All they have is their venom. And, you know, it, it doesn't matter if I do anything. Um, they, they, will, they will rant and rage and do all their their hatred, you know, regardless. So, you know, I'm, it, it's just a matter of you got to stick by your values and stick by your principles. And I'm going to do that. You know, that's the best thing that I hear. And I hope people are paying attention to that because when it comes to you and it is, whether you're a small YouTube creator, whether you're on, you're writing a book, you're writing a song, you want to be an actor, you want to just live any part of your life. I mean, you try and work for Coca-Cola. They're trying to give you classes to apologize for being white. Never do that. Never do that. Uh, don't apologize for being born, whatever you are. Uh, you know, you got to remember the best answer, I believe, and I think Blaine is giving you a great example of that right now, just like Gina Carano, just like Eric July. Stand up and say, no, that's too far. That's a bridge too far. I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to just bow down and obey. And you know you know me, Blaine. I hate oh, yeah. just laying down. I'll obey. No, do not obey. We are Americans. We have a wonderful benefit the rest of the world will never have that leads us to be so much ahead of everyone else. Freedom. That's freedom of speech, freedom to defend ourselves, freedom to try, and, and it's life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You may not get it right the first time. You go back, you try it again. And I, I think this is a great example of that, Blaine. Where it's, you know, didn't work exactly right the first time. No problem. You still got plenty of room to keep going forward. And I think you're getting more people who are going to say, let me, and I do tell people, we'll have it in, uh, when I do the edit, I'm going to have it down there, some of the links to some of your books and some of the material you're working on. And trust me, I'm going to keep up on this creative juggernaut. I want to see this game system because I do like games like that. It's a lot of fun. We, you know, I'm a kid at heart. I never stop playing games. Uh, my grandson wants me to start up a D&D session for him and his buddies, and I'm going to do it, And uh -oh. I, I, yeah, which I've been doing. I've, I've had an ongoing campaign for years now um, that, that I do, and for adults, so now I'm going to do one for kids again, and I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun, and you know, to me, that you, you have to embrace the things that give you joy, and gaming gives me joy. Uh, I love the gaming industry. I will say it has become a woke fest, um, be it at Gen Con and some of their tactics that they're employing, you know, putting personal pronouns on everybody's badge and making people wear masks, uh, you know, it, when quite literally the oh, starter football <laughs> games, which are next door, you don't have to wear masks. I mean, it's like, this is, it's just gotten crazy, um, some of the stuff that, that's been going on in the gaming industry. But I also think that there's a lot of conservatives out there that just want a good product. And there's a lot of players that really don't give a damn about the politics of it. They just want something to play that's fun. And that's what we're going to do. And that's why I think that's the best answer possible. Just, you know, there's there's room for that. I'm as I am as political as anyone gets, and more than most, absolutely. And you know what? When I'm playing a game, I'm playing a game. When I when I play Mech Warrior Five, when I play, uh, God, I've been playing so many things. I forget sometimes all the stuff. I mean, I have over 150 games off of Steam that I play. You know, I, I'm not thinking about. Oh, I wonder what AOC is saying right now. No, it's like I'm playing the game because right, it, it's time. It's for escapism. Fun. Yeah, it's the fun. It's like okay, that stuff's all gone. I'm gonna watch an anime now because it's fun. Let that stuff all go. 
and 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 I think people forget that sometimes fun is just fun, and we have to. And it's kind of sad, but it's important to say, you know what? And we have to defend the people who give us that opportunity for fun. Those are those people that give us that opportunity for escapism. Because if you lose that, what is left in life? What we're just going to trudge and be serfs and peons, miserable all the time. No one wants that. No. Yeah, you know, it's weird that they want you to be silent. They want you to self-censor. They want you to not say anything because then that gives them complete power and control. And you and I have talked about this so many times. And you you just can't do that. As conservatives, if you stand up for something, stand up for it. And they are going to come at you. They are going to say and do terrible and nasty things. And all it does is show the world who they are. It doesn't have anything to do with who you really are. Uh, I think, what was it recently? What we, we were in one of the round tables we were in, I think it said, they're doing this because they're desperate now. Because no one's, it, we've seen so many examples of this. And everyone's getting fed up with it and going, no, stop. <laughs> this isn't what we want. This isn't how we live with each other. This isn't bringing us together. So just stop. I think, yeah. I think we're getting close to the end of it. I'd like to believe. I'd like I to- hope so. I, I hope we don't end up in a bad situation, but I don't want to rule that out. You know, some of these people are pretty extreme and we've seen mm-hmm. people who have whipped themselves into a frenzy and then drove up, you know, to Maryland to go try to kill three Supreme Court justices. And, you know, they, they get whipped up on the rhetoric, they get whipped up on the hype and too much time on the computer. And what they do is dangerous to a lot of people. So is it rough? Yeah, it's rough out there. But, uh, you know, I think we're all, we're all in this fight together. <laughs> that we are, that we are. Before we do anything else, uh, let me make sure for people to follow you going forward. I know that you have a, uh, I believe... It's the WordPress, blainepardo.wordpress.com, uh, yep. where you do some notes from the bunker. But is there, yep. a, and there's also your Twitter, which is, I forget. Be Pardo 870 I'm also on uh, Facebook. You know, you can just look up Blaine Pardo. You're going to find me. Um, you know, and obviously, if you really want to get to know me, just go on amazon.com, pull up my books. It's the best way to get to know who I am and what I'm about <laughs> Some of the things we've been talking about today, go look at my books on Amazon or go to Barnes and Noble and order them, whatever boat you float. That's what I'm hoping people are going to go for and learn more about the man that I've been talking to again for five, six months now. And I have no problem with anything you've said ever. So, you know, thank you. If anyone wants to have any question about that, hey, I will be a character witness. Not a problem. Uh, but I want to thank you all for taking some time. I look forward to seeing the comments from everybody about what you think, um, as long as they're respectful. And uh, maybe we can get Blaine back, especially if you know we get a word or two about that next game system. I'm not letting that go. Uh, <laughs> and we'll, we'll see if we can get a heads up on that. All uh, right. But uh, with every, with that said, I want to thank Blaine Pardo for being here. I thank you for watching this, and I hope to see you again soon on No Sound Bites Allowed. Thanks, Mike.